Welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Quickly to a first conversation this morning. The national president of the National um, Association of Resident Doctors, Nigeria's uh, uh, Doctors, Resident Doctors Union, Dr. Innocent Oji, has revealed that uh, Nigeria has lost about 2,800 resident doctors over a period of two years. Now, he said that the number does not include consultants and other doctors, of course, because we're looking at uh, resident doctors. But he was speaking at a press conference at the end of a, a three-day National Executive Council meeting of uh, the NARD in the Akwabum State Capital, Uyo, on Saturday um, with a the theme, Improved Welfare of Healthcare Workers, a Panacea for Brain Drain. I'm sure it tells us a uh, bit the thesis of what he's um, a statement was. Um, the president of uh, the NARD disclosed that from a study the organization had conducted in September 2022, a total of 800 resident doctors had traveled out of the country from January to August of that year, which implied that a uh, 100 resident doctors leave Nigeria every single month. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, eight months, they had 800 doctors leaving. Uh, now, this is the latest statistic in the, from the years-long phenomenon of brain drain in Nigeria's health system. We're here to talk about this again. Uh, Dr. Tui Mebawondo joins us. He's a public health expert. He's joining us via Zoom in Lagos. Dr. Mebawondo, good morning to you and thank you very much for your time. Good morning. Thank you for having me. All right. Dr. Personally, I'm, I'm really tired of talking about this, you know, because we keep talking about brain drain. They're leaving. And um, I think more doctors are going to leave in the coming months um, if, if, if nothing drastic is done. Uh, do you agree with me? And what are your thoughts on what the NARD is saying with their study being done from January to August 2022? Yeah, thank you. We've been at the crisis period for a long time. We are actually going to a grind now. Uh, it means that we may get to a point where indeed uh, we may not have uh, medical people working in our hospitals. Um, uh, because if you look at it, we have been having re um, gradual decrease in the number in the ability to produce doctors and those and ability to retain them. Okay, um, let me capture this since 1963. Nigeria produced um, 93,000 doctors. Out of that 93,000 doctors, how many do we have left? 24,000. So you can imagine if you have 24,000 doctors um, caring for 20 million people. Now, our capacity to produce also is compromised. How do I mean compromise? In the sense that uh, the best we have done is to produce about 3,000 doctors every blessed year. Now, the number is falling. Um, strike, closure of the universities, lack of interest in medical, and then even consistent egress or emigration of doctors to, to, to different countries. It's been and then, um, like every month, you have 40 doctors living, and like you said, it's for six months, 800 doctors living. And during this six, six months, um, strikes, strike, strike. So we are getting to that point where we may have to end up without having uh, doctors to work in our system. It's a very pathetic situation. Uh, government don't even give care. They don't give a damn about um, your situation. They don't care. They don't care. Government is not doing anything about it. Well, I'd I like you to respond to, I mean, the issue of brain drain. There's been a lot of thoughts, comments, reactions, and what have you. Abayo right here in Lagos has... Uh, you know, mention his, he's put out his thoughts and he said that one of the things that needed to be done to address brain drain was that it's important to ensure that students admitted to study, study held related courses were those burning with desires. Uh, so I'd like yes. to ask you, is burning uh, desire, I mean, passion, it will be the word, is passion enough, you know, for, or a criteria for solving uh, the brain drain issue that we're faced with? You can't be a solution of your of a serious problem like that on emotion. I think it will be pretty wrong for you to wake up and say, you know, um, passion, emotion. You know, let me tell you, if you want to solve the challenge of brain drain or even inadequate health workforce um, in the nation, um, it is not it, the solution does not reside in health system alone because education is part of it. You have to you know, be able to attract sufficient number of people to do science, 
sufficient number of them to do uh, to study medicine and then provide capacity to train those doctors. That is education. Um, when they after being educated, you have to find out how to um, employ them and raise them appropriate. That is ministry of You have to find a way to finance them. That is ministry of finance. So you have to get a kind of um, complete uh, link to those cases, uh, and the health system. That is able to get a complete link between those ministries and health system. And you have to mobilize for to find a professional place for them to learn. And then at the same time, you have to enumerate them, you have to provide a job for them. So that is the concept of trying to solve the problem. You cannot just wake and and you don't and your university does not have the capacity to do that. What do so for me, it's not just um we, we like short course, like, you know, and uh, like be a firefighter. So that you get a system that will have a sustainable uh, healthcare system and push brain drain. If you look at the country uh, where in like in a grind, no money, uh, no fuel, no lights, who would want to stay in this kind of situation? There are a lot of push factors happening in our environment that we're not addressing. So, but um, honestly, some of the challenges in this life. Requires, you know, a kind of critical thinking. A kind of critical thinking. It requires us to to look away from the common way we do our things, and then put us together to come to the system, for the health system, um, for the state, um, number of health workers. So yes, we are going for a grind. We won't see anybody. Nobody will come and learn those. Nobody. Nobody will move away. Because you are going to spend many years, six, seven years, then national four years. Who's going to put ten years of his own years of his life, uh, adult life, to, to study a course where at the end of the day you won't be paid? Look at what is happening. Um, uh, Abia State has not paid for about 20 months. Doctor's fees have not been paid. Um, 10 months, 85 months, Undo, three months. These are things that are highly concerning. That you work, you not get salary. So, so it's a lot of issue. It's a lot of issue. Hmm. All right. Doc, uh, uh, we, we've talked about this many times, you know, over the few, a few years. Um, I mean, I know, I know some doctors who didn't even need to have a job to leave. Some left. Um, these are very promising. I know one very promising, you know, medical doctor. He was a resident doctor and had moved to, on to the next level. Um, I spoke to him some time ago, found out that he had left, you know, to Canada. Um, and he was just, um, you know, hadn't gotten a work permit or was not qualified to work in Canada. So he was just, you know, assisting a doctor and working under him. So, you know, it's, it's, it seems that the doctors who are really qualified here are prepared to go abroad to even do some so-called menial things as far as their, their qualifications are concerned. I think it paints a picture of the situation. Now, um, should Nigeria be placing a moratorium on doctors who are trained with government subsidies, relocating to other countries after their training? Let me, let, I think let's just debunk that. In, in fact, um, anybody that mentions subsidy for, in training of doctors is being clever by half. What is subsidy? Training of doctors involves well, those teachers, right, and classroom. But it also involves a lot of things you have to buy, your books, your equipment, your feeding, accommodation. Those ones are not subsidized by anybody. And now, when you're talking about this subsidy, the same government also provides that kind of um, services for lawyers, for accountants, for journalists in the universities, right? So, what, where, where, where is the subsidy for doctors? But, 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 Doc, doc yeah, the, 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 the resident doctors themselves have gone on protests a number of times <coughs> um, because yeah. of, of, of the lack of um, funding for their um, statutory training, the training they're supposed to embark on. You know, the courses they're meant to embark on, lack of government funding for it and government to call them for a meeting and release money. Also, these resident doctors are trained in public um, teaching hospitals free of charge. What, what? So wait, hold on, hold on. Let's and government, government pays the, the, the professors in these teaching what? hospitals. Government buys the facilities there. They don't pay for it. Uh, no, those governments, those professors are healing people. They are, they are, they are doing job. They're working. 
you know why would government help you see the the the, the no but are you saying the government are, doesn't doesn't like contribute that, in any way to the training that, of doctors in nigeria is that what you're saying hold, sir hold on hold on hold on let me clarify you get it very clear now you know uh, in 2017 um government enacted the uh, nigeria resident doctors training act whereby government supposed to sponsor four of the update courses just four of the update courses during the four years residency training program Government is not the government is not doing that. It became a, a an issue. And then we, if you say sponsor of four of, of the of the update courses, the update courses are so plenty. Okay? The fact that government sponsor for does that make does that mean that government is is, 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 is subsidizing them? If you want to subsidize, let's assume that, that you now said, okay, each of the resident doctor, I'm gonna give you five million. That is there you talk, you quantify the subsidy. Oh everybody, Nigeria Law School. Uh, everything, everybody have some support from government. All the education has support from government. Politicians are getting support from government. Even subsidized, even when they are still getting a lot of money. You know, they have cash around it. Why is the straight doctor being subsidized? Where is it coming from? It's like black women. No, nobody subsidized anybody. If you talk about that, tell the people in the house of the uh, house of red to pay for their condition, fill their existing pretty. So, I mean, that. All right. Okay, uh, uh, Doc, we have a bit of a situation with your connection. So, yeah, Doc. Yeah, Doc, can you hear me, please? I can. Okay, we, we have a bit of a network interruption, so maybe you can just make the last point you made before we move on to our next question. I, I, I said, listen. Doctors are not being subsidized. Politicians, they, they are virtually running on our own taxes. Still, they get jumbo pay. Nobody's complaining about that. All other professions get training, get the same training from lecturers, and nobody's saying that's being subsidized. So why why single are the doctors? That's the question. So let's, let's leave that. Don't let anybody repeat that, you know, anywhere. Uh, well, but, but, the, but the federal government has also uh, made a pledge, if you like to say, or a request, asking doctors and you know nurses and every medical expert to you know bear with them as they're putting out measures to ensure that everything is in place. I mean, so at this point, would it be fair for for you to say that you know these doctors should um, you know just consider because uh, we're getting to a point where we're not going to have doctors, so. Is it fair for doctors now, those who are still in Nigeria and who are having plans to uh, move uh, to, you know, um, be patriotic? That would be the question, the word. Now, um, we didn't start like this. Let's be fair. Um, okay. The condition that's created this was created, you know, okay, look. First and foremost, the capacity to train is constrained. At least the science is constrained. Okay? Um, even getting a job after training is challenged. So in reality, you know, it was seen that is what the government, you know, actually messed up all these things. Okay? So what we're, what we're looking for is for government to really turn around and figure out what, to, what they need to do. People will always stay with the, in the country and hold on to their job when those conditions are, are pretty right. Okay, look at it. If you have option, we want to stay in a country where you cannot even get access to your own money. Let's face it. You do want to stay in a country where you cannot advance your profession. You want to stay where you don't have equipment to do the work. Provide all those things. Incentivize these things. And if you want to subsidize, raise good money. You can tell you, see, I'm a participant in many ways. I am a medical doctor. My daughter is studying medicine. So I know what I'm about. Just in Nigeria. So I know what I'm talking about exactly. So I know what it means that in my own input, I know what can be the frustration. And this is what we're saying that government should remove it. If you know that your health is linked to your wealth, then you need to do something more drastic. You know, to resolve that, you need to do something more drastic. You can't just be preparing and preparing and like, blackmailing. This that's not the way to do the work health now. The group of health workforce is there. 
we're having, you know, Africa is having like, you know, 3% disease burden of the world. 4%. And they're having about 3% of the, of, of the world. All right. Uh, Doc, we, uh, we apologize. Um, the network has been not too charitable, but I think your point has been made. I uh, uh, wish we had t more time with you. Um, but it, it remains clear, I think the NARD have said exactly what needs to be done. The welfare of doctors needs to be taken very seriously so that they remain uh, in the country. I'll add to that also, Mercy, um, the situation as far as the facilities and then the state of the public health facilities in Nigeria are concerned. But we'll leave it at that right now because we have to take a break. And when we return, we have a final conversation this morning. We'll definitely look at the issue of electricity tariff that's been increased and the fact that Nigerians have decried it, they described this as unfair and there's no justification for that increase. Please stay with us.